Well, when I joined Internews in 1989, um, we were just going through a real reshuffle internally. Um, the president of Internews, Kim Spencer, just decided that month to leave and go to ABC News and become a coordinating producer of Primetime Live. And David Hoffman became president of Internews. The headquarters of Internews then moved from San Francisco to Arcata, all this in the month that I joined. <laughs> so uh, suddenly it was you know, at the world headquarters of Internews. Internews headquarters was one room uh, in a building in Arcata uh, shared by David Hoffman, the president, and myself. Uh, we were very high tech because we used email back in 1989, a very clunky system as I recall, but it was email. And we had a fax machine, and it had the old thermal fax paper that you had to cut each page apart with scissors. And this is how we would get faxes from the uh, Supreme Soviet in Moscow uh, for the television programs we were producing with ABC News. When Internews started, it was in the 80s during the Cold War, and all of our work was really focused on using the power of communications to transcend those political and ideological barriers between people. And um, in some ways, we're still doing that. We're still using media to empower people and to give them the information they need to make decisions for themselves, their families, their communities. But one of the biggest changes that we've seen in this time is um, the collapse of the Soviet Union and all of Eastern Europe, which meant that instead of working with uh, state television in the Soviet Union, for instance, we were able to support all these independent little broadcasters that were popping up like mushrooms around the country. Um, so our focus shifted quite dramatically around 1990-91 to supporting local independent grassroots media, um, starting in the Soviet Union and then uh, moving into Eastern Europe and the Middle East, Africa and Asia, and a little bit into Latin America now. Another important change that's happened in my time is the whole uh, digital convergence explosion. So in the uh, 80s and 90s, we were focused on what's now called traditional media. Um, but starting around 2000, we realized that with digital convergence, uh, people are getting their information on a variety of platforms, on the internet, on cell phone text messages, um, you know, blogs, email, a variety of vehicles that didn't exist before, but ultimately they're still getting news and information and we still have a responsibility to make sure that they're getting quality, reliable, diverse sources of information. I've had a number of roles over the last 20 years at Internews. Uh, I started out as the administrative assistant to the president uh, and that involved everything from representing Internews at international diplomatic conferences in Europe to emptying the trash, writing the checks, cutting the fax pages apart with the scissors. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Um, as the company has grown, my role has really evolved a number of times. Uh, I spent several years as administrative director, which meant a lot of proposal writing and contract management. Um, I was simultaneously personnel manager, so you know, writing personnel policies, and simultaneously in charge of our communications, so producing newsletters. Um, Internews grew uh, really explosively for a number of years, and so we had to be inventing systems um, as quickly as we possibly could. We were always sort of catching up with our tail on that, um, and so it required a lot of flexibility and ingenuity and uh, smarts and hard work just to keep on top of our growth. I think the secret to Internews' success has been the great belief in the power of the individual. And we see that manifested in our mission of empowering local media worldwide so that they can inform and empower the individuals uh, at the grassroots level. And we also see it in our own management style in that the managers at Internews are given a great deal of latitude to be creative, to try new ideas, to um, invent new disciplines and they're given the resources and support to do that and it makes for a very um, very creative, dynamic, innovative, sometimes crazy uh, environment and I think it is um, a reason why we are able to attract and keep the kind of talent we do.
but I do feel very fortunate to have been able to spend most of my career so far at Internews, an organization that really embodies um, the values that, that I hold dear of um, empowerment of the individual and of a belief in the power of information to change lives.